So potassium is another cation, and some of the things I look for with this element is relation to the other cations into the soil. So the way that we can get this is from a soil sample, looking at our base saturations, but then also our parts per million. One thing that I look for is our ratio between potassium and magnesium. So I look at my PPMs of K, my PPMs of magnesium, and I try to get those as close to one to one as possible, and or if it's heavier on the magnesium side, I feel okay. Then I get over to base saturations, and if our base saturations of potassium is below two, we're gonna see a gain by applying potassium to that field. Now, one thing that's very unique and very situational up in the sand hills where I'm located is our base saturations are high, but our parts per million is still low. So to get what we want with our yield goal, we actually have to increase our amount of potassium to sustain that yield, even though our base sat's high. Now, if you have parts per million over 250 and your base saturation's above three and a half to four, more times than not, uh, potassium is not going to be a yield limiting factor. One thing I think we got to look at too is how fast can our soil release potassium during rapid vegetative growth. If you look at the chart, it's amazing that that V6, how fast it spikes up. So if, something wanted, if somebody wanted to do a trial to see if K is a yield limiting factor, you can do a tissue test and then if it's showing low on K, it's a great opportunity for you to do a side dress with potassium during that time.